Hi, I'm Alexis Engelke. I'm from the Technical University of Munich in Germany. And I'm going to present about InScrew or how to leverage LLVM for high performance dynamic binary instrumentation. So first, what is program instrumentation about? The goal of program instrumentation is to enhance program with additional code and this has several interesting use cases. For example, it may be useful for analysis of programs and its performance characteristics, for debugging, thinking of analyzing memory issues, and for optimization and portability. A frequent, frequently used approach is dynamic binary instrumentation, where the binary code is instrumented and modified at runtime. This works without recompiling program or its libraries, and is even possible without having access to the source of program or libraries. And as this is a very, very popular approach, many frameworks which perform dynamic binary instrumentation are available. The most popular DBI framework is Valgrind, which allows for extensive code transformations and modifications. The program behavior can be extended and modified in an architecture-independent code representation. The usual focus is low writing time, but not the overall performance which means that such frameworks usually perform few and lightweight optimizations which can be done fast, but the instrumented code has a low quality. The solution to this problem is to use a standard compiler backend, which alleviates the problem of, a, of the low code quality. One very popular co code generation framework is the LLVM compiler infrastructure, which features a high quality optimizer and code generator. Especially interesting for the use case of dynamic binary instrumentation is the built-in JIT compiler, which allows code generation at runtime. We are not the first to propose the use of LLVM for dynamic binary instrumentation. In fact, DBILL uses LLVM JIT compiler for code generation. They lift machine code first to TCGIR using QEMU, while TCG is the internal code representation used by QEMU. And from the TCG code representation, they lift the code further to the LLVM IR. But with this approach, it is easy for them to support several architectures because QEMU has the support of many architectures. This has two major drawbacks. First, it is not possible to efficiently support floating point or SIMD operations due to limitations in the TCG instruction set. Second, optimizations are limited to basic blocks or a small chains of basic blocks being unable to exploit the whole power of LLVM's optimization framework. Our solution to this problem is to lift machine code directly from raw x86 code to LLVM IR code. So, to see how we can integrate LLVM IR into the architecture of a dynamic binary instrumentation framework, we first have a look at the architecture of a classical instrumentation framework. So, in the instrumenter process we have an execution manager which initially at the program beginning loads the guest program in its address phase. Then it starts at decoding the program at the entry address, decodes a bunch of instructions, lifts it to its own intermediate representation, where it performs some instrumentation, then it will probably optimize this code representation, and then generates new machine code of it. This machine code is then stored in the so-called code cache, where it can be executed. Once this chunk of code finished executing, the execution manager determines the next address to be ex executed and repeats the whole process again. And this process repeats until the program is finished. To incorporate LLVM IR into this architecture, we do not lift a custom intermediate representation, but we use LLVM IR. So we lift to LLVM IR, optimize LLVM IR code, and then use the LLVM JIT compiler to generate new code. The LLVM JIT compiler and the optimizations are already available in the LLVM framework. However, this is not the case about the lifter from machine code to LLVM IR code. And this is what the next section of this talk is about. For our lifter, we focus on the most common x86-64 architecture, although the concepts apply to other architectures as well. For our lifter, we determine three main requirements. First of all, the LLVM IR must be good, in the sense that it can be handled well by the existing optimization and code generation passes. And this is very critical for runtime performance of the generated code. Second, 
We strive to avoid unnecessary and complex transformations after lifting, which re to reduce the writing time. Third, we restrict ourselves to only use architecture independent LVM and R constructs, meaning that we do not use inline assembly or target specific intrinsics. And this leads to retargetability, meaning that we can execute lifted code on other 64 bit architectures as well, which are supported by LVM. And we implement this in our lifting library, which we call Relu. The lifting happens in three stages. First of all, we decode instructions that recover the control flow. So we start decoding machine code, follow jump targets, on conditional jumps we follow both jump targets, and only stop on indirect branches, calls, and returns. And once we have decoded the sequence of instructions, we split these instructions into basic blocks. Then in the second step, we create a skeleton LLVMIR function and lift the instructions individually to LLVMIR. So we generate LLVMIR code in the corresponding basic blocks. And third, we create a function epilog and add branches between the different basic blocks and also map the data flow of the registers between the basic blocks. For those who know LLVM better, this is realized using finals. The key concept of the our lifter which distinguishes it from other lifters, is the concept of facets. With a facet, we mean a type view on a register or a part of a register. For example, consider the x86 register array x, which can be accessed as 32-bit integer in eax or a 16-bit integer in ax, and with ax and eax being part of the register array x. In our lifter, we store multiple facets for registers which means that we avoid many insert and extract operations, which not only leads to less code, but also to better and more idiomatic code, which can be better optimized by the LVM's optimization passes and therefore leads to better code even in complex control flows. For general purpose registers, we only have scalar integer facets. However, we also have vector registers, where not only the size of the register differs, but also the type. For example, a 128-bit register may be interpreted as a 4 times 32-bit float vector or an 8 times 16-bit integer vector. And with the use of facets, we eliminate the use of frequent casts between these types. So we will now go through a simple example where we lift a single instruction to a LVM IR. First of all, we have here the skeleton function, which takes a single parameter. This parameter is appointed as the CPU struct which lies in memory, and this structure contains the instruction pointer, the values of registers and status flags, and also the vector registers. And in the function prolog, we construct the pointers into the CPU structure for later use. Then, we also load all the register values into single setting assignment variables to avoid frequent memory accesses throughout the lifted code. Then we start lifting the individual instructions, in our case, we have a single basic block for a single instruction. Here we lift a simple subtract instruction that subtracts the constant value from the re register RSP. This instruction is straightforward lifted to an LVM IR subtract instructions. However, in contrast to the machine code, the semantics of the status flag computations are now explicit. As we have no further instructions, we go on to the epilogue where we store the values of modified registers back to the CPU struct into memory. We also store the value of the new instruction pointer, which is the next instruction to be executed as we finish with our chunk of code. Now that we have seen how to solve the problem of lifting x86 machine could efficiently to LLVMIR code using our new lifting library Relu, we can turn ourselves to integrating this into an instrumentation framework. However, as a single address space containing both the execution manager and the lifter has some disadvantages, we made another important design decision in which we split the instrumental process in two processes. A client process, which is responsible for managing the execution and also contains the code cache, and the server process, which is responsible for decoding, lifting, optimizing, and code generation. And this architecture is implemented in our new instrumentation framework, which we call Instru. So the client-server architecture works as follows. 
The Instru server is passive and only rewrites code chunks on explicit client requests. And once it receives a rewriting request from the client, it performs writing an instrumentation and returns an ELF object file containing the rewritten code. The Instru client manages the execution and the local code cache and eventually sends the request with, together with the program code to the server process for rewriting and instrumenting. Once it receives back an ELF file, it applies relocations and resolves missing symbols, making the client essentially a very simple runtime ELF object file linker. Communication between client and server process is realized using a custom binary interprocess communication protocol. We'll now go through some important details for our instrumentation framework. So first of all, in contrast to several other binary instrumentation frameworks which transform code with basic block or super block granularity, we opted for the use of function granularity, which means that we only stop decoding on call return and indirect jump instructions. And this enables the full power of LLVM's whole function optimizations. As a side effect, it also reduces the number of rewriting requests the client needs to send to the server. Another optimization is the use of a special calling convention where we are able to reduce the number of memory accesses required to the CPU structure which lies in memory. A further optimization is that we do not compute flags immediately before call and return instructions. This is because flags are extremely rarely used to pass arguments and return values across functions. And therefore, for very most programs, it's possible to do not avoid flag computation at this point. However, this optimization is optional as it may technically mo modify program behavior, although we did not experience any such case before. To evaluate the performance of our instrumentation framework, we are run on the standard spec CPU 2017 benchmark suite. We compared the performance overhead with Baldwin, which is the most popular binary instrumentation tool available, but which has a similar set of use cases. Unfortunately, we were not able to compare against DBILL due to the lack of sources, and we did not compare against PIN as it has a different scope of code modifications, in that it only allows for the insertion of function calls but no deeper program changes. The configuration of the benchmark system is shown below. These are the results of on the SPEC CPU 2017 benchmark suite. We first focus on the mean performance overhead. Instru has a mean performance overhead of 72% or a slowdown of a factor of 1.7 on the SPEC benchmarks. This is a fifth compared to the overhead of Walgreens with a 367% or a slowdown of a factor of 4.7. In its best case, Instru has an overhead of just 10%, which shows that the quality of the generated code is, leads to a low overhead. However, this is not the case for all the pro programs. For example, on the Omnet PP benchmark, Instru has an overhead of more than 200%. This is caused by the high number of function calls this benchmark does, and as function calls are optimization boundaries due to our use of function granularity, this leads to significant overhead. The slowest benchmark, however, is the GCC benchmark, where Instru slows down the program execution by a factor of 4. The reason for this is the exceptionally high writing time of over 30%. The mean writing time, however, is 0.9% and where much and is only, the only exception is GCC where it's over 10%. To further understand the impact of the rewriting time, we analyzed how much time is spent for lifting code, optimizing code, generating new machine code and linking the code fragments together. The results are shown below. We find that of two thirds of the time are spent for machine code generation. The selection DAC instruction selector, which, which we use for our high quality code generation, is known to have performance problems. However, the replacement backend, Global ISO, is not yet ready and ported for x86-64. The results show that a clear performance improvement over Vulcan is possible due to the use of better optimizations and the high quality code generator. Also, we expect significant performance improvement in comparison to DBILL, 
So INSPI has an overhead of 109% on the integer subset of the SPEC CPU 2017 benchmarks, while DBLL is reported to have an overhead of 240% on an older version of the same benchmarks. However, the result also showed the biggest drawback of our approach, which is the rewriting time. And this rewriting time needs to amortize over the run of the program. Ongoing developments in the LLVM community to reduce compile time are expected to significantly reduce this issue in the future. To conclude, we have seen a dynamic binary instrumentation framework that uses LLVM, and we were the first to lift whole functions directly to LLVM IR and then use LLVM's high quality optimizer and code generator for binary instrumentation. We have also introduced a client and server approach enabling further optimizations. Finally, on the benchmarks, we saw a reduction of the overhead of 80% compared to the state of the R2 to involvement. Finally, we want to point out that Instru is free software and is open source available on GitHub. Thanks for watching and I'm happy to answer your questions in the Slack channel or via email.